know if you've been following those that we've measured our discs and found that they were slightly under the minimum required thickness. Thickness on vented discs for this is 22 millimeters. That's the minimum thickness you can have on a running disc. So we've changed them. You can see here new discs and we've also put on fresh calipers. And just a note, after the bolt had been tightened up, or the two retaining bolts, we found after torquing them that one was actually still loose. So it always pays to use your torque wrench to check the torque after you've done your tightening. Changing the calipers also means letting the brake fluid go. Obviously the pipe could be clamped, but in this occasion we took the pipe off and let the fluid drain. This subject is quite lengthy, so we've split this video into two halves. First one will be about the tools you use and the techniques for bleeding the system of your brakes. Second one will be a little bit more advanced and uh, using tools and back bleeding your system so you get an effective brake if you can't get air out of your system. <laughs> Okay, this is what Land Rover say about a circuit bleed, complete circuit bleed. This is where me and Land Rover actually part ways because there are two circuits in a brake system. They also recommend bleed the front calipers on the driver's side first. I'd beg to differ as well. Okay, so what we have here is a diagram of the 110 braking system and you can clearly see that the vehicle has more than one circuit. In fact, it has two circuits, one for the rear brakes and one for the front brakes. You can see these clearly marked here. Not all vehicles are like this. Some are diagonally split. However, on the Land Rover 110, it is laid out like this. On the 90, it's different. If you look at item C, that's a uh, pressure restricting valve, or PRV which restricts the pressure to the rear brakes, being as it's a lighter vehicle. You will also find this on Land Rover Discoveries. The PRV on these vehicles also acts as a safety device, so if you split a brake hose, then it will shut that line down and keep braking on the other circuit. Brake fluid is recommended that it's changed every two years. Now, if you look at this container here, it will tell you the boiling point of the fluid, but it also will tell you the wet boiling point of the fluid. This is when you have moisture in there. More than 4% is dangerous because as you use your brakes, it heats the fluid up. If the boiling point of the fluid is lower, you then lose your braking efficiency. We have a tester here, BA4861, which is from Laser Tools, Bearmark, and this is for checking brake fluid moisture content. And basically what you're doing is using this instrument to see how much fluid or moisture content is in the brake fluid. It also pays to check the new fluid that you buy before you put it in your vehicle. These little instruments, well, they suffer from flat batteries. This one's telling me, red light, that the battery is flat, so I need to change it. The tools here really do need to be used regularly when you're servicing your vehicle and monitor what you're doing. This one here, same thing, I use for work regularly for brake and clutch fluid checks. We'll go through some of the tools that we're going to need. Orientate yourself around some stuff here. This is a flare nut wrench. This is a brilliant spanner for undoing unions on pipes, which, like such, has got a slot so you can put it over the pipe and it has a nice snug fit to undo a pipe union. Compared to an open-ended spanner, like this one, which can slip and round off the edges of the nut. Okay, so you still need spanners, and this one's a combination ring spanner, which is ideal for undoing the bleed nipples on your calipers and possibly your wheel cylinders if you have them. If you leave the ring on the bleed nut, then put your pipe on there, you can then do and undo as required and still keep the piping in place. Right, so this is a pipe clamp, one of many types that you can get, and this is for gently clamping the pipe together so it stops the fluid if you're disassembling something. So you can basically clamp it off, strip a pipe off, and then afterwards put it back together and bleed it up without losing all of your fluid. Using a hose clamp could be controversial for some, but even in the workshop manual, if you look at point three, using a recognized hose clamp, clamp the hose to prevent loss of brake fluid. 
This means even Land Rover recognise the use of hose clamps. Generally there are plenty of one man bleeders and wonderful pots and pipes that you can use for bleeding up a system however the best one is always the pipe with a jar. I've got coffee jars here which have very good sealable lids to seal any fluid in that you're going to keep. And this pipe here, windscreen washer pipe. So you know what to ask for if you need some. Right, cleaning the brakes after you've done your bleeding up is brake and clutch cleaner. Highly flammable of course and this with an applicator you will want to clean off any brake fluid that's been spilt or any wax that's on the discs before you put the brakes into service. You squirt it on and wipe it off. This leaves no residue whatsoever. The 300 TDI Defender in the manual under fluids and capacities we look at brake and clutch reservoirs. Brake fluid should have a minimum boiling point of 260 degrees centigrade and that will be a dot for fluid. The fluid we're using today is a professional fluid because it says for professional use only at the top here which just means read the data sheet for safety and we look at the top here and this is what you need to look at on any container for brake fluid is the boiling point boiling point at 260 degrees centigrade okay so that's pretty good for your specific vehicle check your workshop manual for the data under fluid and capacities brake fluid is very nasty it also strips paint if it's spilt onto it so we're using this tiny little pump from laser bear mark part numbers on the screen this will help to stop spillages that's all you need to get is a brake fluid checker to check the moisture content so we can see here on new fluid it's less than one percent which is okay anything that's about four percent or more is dangerous in your vehicle unless you're using something that is immune to hygroscopia then checking even your clutch fluid reservoir could give you a surprise like this one okay let's get into bleeding the brakes up we're going for the old-fashioned glass jar and tube method which is the most effective to be honest with you and the cheapest way of doing it without buying any specialist tools okay so basically pipe on bleed nipple crack off bleed nipple you have your end in some fluid and then it's gently pump and hold then let off rest and then push down again and what you're doing is pumping a fluid towards your calipers or wheel cylinders and we're aiming to get all the air out of the system air is compressible whereas brake fluid is not so what we're trying to achieve is a clear pipe with no air bubbles in it whatsoever and you'll watch this tube here this pipe uh, pushing it through the fluid you can see air bubbles are still coming through once they stop then you know that the system on this caliper has no air in it you can generally feel if you're pushing it you'll feel when there is resistance where the fluid is on your pedal and you want to take it gently when pushing your pedal down take your time but you'll find that using the foot pedal method it moves a lot of fluid so when you're bleeding periodically check the level of your reservoir don't let it go more than halfway down once you're confident there's no air in the system you can nip the nipple off not too tight remove the pipe and then fit the dust cover to the nipple this will stop any dirt clogging up the nipple right so there are a few schools of thought with a brake system you always start with the front start with the front that's furthest away from the master cylinder you can check your manual and follow the instructions or you can do it rule of thumb second one do the one nearest to the master cylinder on the front and then approach the rear brakes the rear brakes you want to do the furthest away from the union first which would be number one pointed here and then the second one which is closest to the pipe the reason for this is air tends to get trapped in the longer pipe so evacuate that first remembering that we have left and right hand drive vehicles it is 
furthest away from the master cylinder, closest to the master cylinder on the front, the rear furthest away from the union, the flexi pipe, and then the closest to the flexi pipe. That's the whole lot done. If the manual tells you to do it diagonally, do it diagonally. However, on defenders, it's this way that I've just described. Now, if you look at the rear of the defender, on the near side in the UK, it's the longest pipe from the flexi. Bleeding the back brakes up, it will take longer if you want to clear out all the fluid because you have longer pipes from the front to the rear. So take time and pump a little bit more fluid out than what you do on the front. So what we're trying to achieve is a solid pedal. And if you push it down, you will not feel it creep or move towards the floor. Pushing it hard, it should not feel spongy. Now if you pump it like that and it goes harder without the vacuum working, then you know you've got air in it. With experience, you'll know how the pedal should feel. If you're not sure, go around and bleed the brakes up again. The reservoir has a minimum and maximum markers. Don't take it over the maximum and don't let it go under the minimum. But usually, when you finish bleeding, push it up to the maximum mark and leave it like that. Then, screw your top on and check that if you have these connections that they are pushed fully home. That's a low-level warning light on there. Well, once you've done your brakes, take it for a gentle road test to make sure that your brakes feel good and are working properly, that there's no sponginess in your pedal. You'll soon know if your brakes are not good enough.